Morty, you gotta come on. You gotta come what, with me. What's going on? I, I got a surprise I'm for you, Morty. What are you talking about? I got a, I got a surprise for you. Come, come on. Ow, gotta ow. get up. Gotta go. Gotta, ow, gotta get out of here. I had one of the early um, developer kits of the Vive. So the Vive, the very before the pre, uh, the one with the 3D printed. You know, the really like yeah. the crazy. Wait, how did that? How did you land one of those so early? Just because you're. Big, big Hollywood shot. <laughs> um, I, I went. I, I, I had planned a trip to Valve the week after GDC 2015, so it was the week after they announced the Vive. Um, but I planned that trip way before that, and it was just to go meet them. We were doing the Dota to uh, Rick and Morty voice pack, and so that was sort of how I got connected to the to the Valve team. Planned a trip, just a fun trip, and then the week before we're about to go at GDC, they announce the Vive, and I'm like already obsessed with VR. The DK1, the DK2, I had been one of the first backers for both of those, or, or purchasers, and um, just went and was so, so excited. Got to try it the week after they announced it, and then and then subsequently was, I, I just was bugging the shit out of Chet Falasek for, for a kit. It will not go wasted, I swear to you, I'm, I, I, will, I will prove to you that if you get me a kit, like I will, I will do right by you, which I did, and I, I, I got a bunch of other people kits that have that have, have been developing their own games, and like, <clears throat> I, 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 I got so many people kits, like, it was like crazy. But, um, but, but that whole process was, you know, uh, was, was sort of, all, all those wheels were sort of in motion as I was meeting all of these amazing devs, like Dirk, who did Space Private Trainer, and, um, and, and Alex Schwartz at Alchemy Labs, and his whole team, and, and the guys, uh, Stress Level Zero, Hover Junkers, and, and just talking to those guys about maybe partnering up, and like, just me trying to figure out how can I get into this, into this, um, you know, this industry without, I, I'm creative. I, I, I know game design. Um, I know I know all of this stuff, but I don't. I'm not a programmer, and I need. I don't. I've never made a game, so it was it was very much like, you know, ne needing that that partner. And then and I met Tanya at E3 after a long uh, a long search for a uh, a partner who could be my studio director and just general, you know, executive producer, sort of all those hats. Um, that I don't that I I don't have or nor do I want to wear. Well, I feel like I'm missing a step here. At what point do you say I need to have my own studio? I need That to... was always the plan. Really? Yeah, but it was just like how do I get there, you know? What's the path? What's the path? Yeah. And so for me it was like I want to make stuff immediately, which uh, William and I uh, uh, teamed up and did this game jam, which is which is what you just experienced. Uh, and that was sort of the first time I ever actually got to make something. But always in the back of my mind was like the the, the dream was to have a team in house uh, to make you know amazing stuff in VR. Um, you know the same way we make Rick and Morty. We have our amazing talented crew in house, uh, and you you know they're just down the hall, and there's all the artists, and you know you can look at a character and give notes in real time, and it's just incredible. Um, but uh, but yeah, to be able to have that with VR is like, that's the holy grail. Like if I won the lottery tomorrow, all I would do is staff up a floor of incredible programmers, level designers, t tech director, blah 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 blah, and just R and D the shit out of you know. Let's just go crazy and make. Let's just go nuts. Let's just make crazy stuff. I'm Derek Smith, and this is my office. So I was currently looking for. I wanted to start my own studio, mm -hmm. um, and I had already been look, talking to some folks and kind of getting some, um, trying to figure out basically what I wanted to do. Mm. And I knew I, I knew I wanted to do it in VR. Like, and I, at Epic, um, I had played around with the Oculus and stuff. Mm. And so for me, when I tried the Vive for the first time, my, similar to Justin, maybe, maybe even similar to you, like my head exploded and I thought it was an incredible um, opportunity. So at E3, I ran into, I was talking to a bunch of folks, ran into Justin's agent, um, Ophir Lupu. And who's a who's also Cliff's agent because I was playing Lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. It's so it's totally like just random, honestly, mm -hmm. very very um, uh, serendipitous. And uh, started talking to Justin, and after a few weeks of like uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> after a few weeks of like uh, great conversations with Justin, that was it. Like we were like, okay, we have to do this. You wouldn't believe how many people's throats I would have to cut out in one single day. It was a really good match. Like our personalities, our skill sets, it was a really good match. So we're a full VR game studio. Mm -hmm. um, the announcement was basically the genesis of that, and we're looking to make 
comedic, um, narrative driven, great gameplay experiences mm -hmm. in VR. And so that's like that's the whole hook. Like we want to make really interesting worlds that have great characters and fantastic narrative. And so that's why accounting was such it's such a great taste of the types of games we want to make mm -hmm. um, in the future. It's like, you know, we want we definitely next steps want to do something long form because right now there's not a lot of like really great long form mm -hmm. content in VR. Yeah. You know, things games that you want to play for hours and hours and hours. Um, so that's like our next big step. Yeah, that's the next. That's the next. That's that's the that's the plan. Moving ahead. <laughs> well, do you have a, a vision or an idea specifically as to what makes sense for long form? Having played, yes. what does and doesn't work in VR? Yes. Like, what what would be your criticisms of the current attempts? At I mean, we we won't get into the nitty gritty, but like, uh, uh, I feel like uh, here here's the biggest uh, criticism I think is that it's so early, yeah. right? So any of the really amazing narrative experiences, which I guarantee you they're out there being developed right now. They're actively being worked on. Um, we're not even going to know about them for eight months, you know, at the earliest. Uh, it takes time, you know. I think I think right now there's this mad rush and scramble to get to market with smaller, shorter form experiences, more arcadey uh, stuff, and it's amazing. There's amazing, amazing experiences that fit into that box. Um, Space Pirate Trainer being one, uh, Audio Shield, uh, Hover Junkers is a fantastic multiplayer experience. Um, one of the only, actually. Uh, and then you get a game like Raw Data, which was which which came out a, a little later. Obviously, we have budget cuts on the horizon. I'm very very excited about mm -hmm. that. Um, I think the, the, those are those are the beacons, you know, of like of like just shining beacons of like oh, mm -hmm. I can't wait. Um, and I'm sure there's so many more that we don't even know about. But really, it's just a matter of uh, of timing. You know, it's like <clears throat> they will come in time. Um, I think I think that kind of sums it up uh, of why the landscape is the way it is currently. Um, very very eager for that like killer app, you know, the, the the first big like you know ten hour or even eight hour like game. That's like like I loved Vanishing Realms. I was like, okay, Vanishing Realms is an example of you know I would play that for ten hours. You know, if it's just you you keep giving me new things, upgrades and like progression. Um, all, all I really want is a little more story, you know. Can I, can y'all can y'all give me some story with this game, please? Uh, I want some story over here. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's there, you know. It's just very like it's it's that kind of current current thing where it's like a scroll unfolds and you're reading this cryptic kind of. But 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 they're giving you clues on what to do. It's 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 amazing. But but we want to do that kind of stuff, but with characters like. You know, like in that are in the space and that are like kind of kind of what we've been doing, what we did with with accounting, where it's like it's not just a scroll. It's like it's like these weird characters that are sort of guiding you. I think that all the VR, uh, all the current hardware options are incredible in their own way. If you are building from the ground up for that for the, hardware, for that platform, to, to play to the strengths of that hardware. So I I believe there are incredible um, just gamepad headset experiences that you could make mm -hmm. to play to the strengths of, of that and not make a player sick and there's all kinds of interesting ways to do that and propel a, a player through a larger world locomotion there's all these locomotion tricks and and whatnot but uh <laughs> but, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> but uh but yeah like 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 that's the trick is it's like you know ports you know, you, if you're going to make a game for room scale, you're going to de design that game from the ground up mm. to play to the strengths of room scale. If you're going to make a game for seated gamepad, um, whether that's for Oculus, PlayStation VR, or even Gear VR, you're going to be right out of the gate. Okay, this is the box. Now, how can I, how can I, how can I make that an offer? Like the fact that the player has a gamepad, how can I make that? Like Chronos is a great example. You know, that's an incredible for me, anyways, because I love Resident Evil. So they kind of just took that. And sort of made you the you know when yeah, he right. the character moves and it's like just jumps to the next it, it's perfect it's like that's a great smart use of mm -hmm. of seated gamepad VR um, Lucky's Tale is another really good one um, there's a lot actually you know keep talking and nobody nobody Perfect. dies or explodes or whatever oh yeah um, nobody explodes yeah 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 but um well what do you yeah. see as someone who's used enough of these and may have insider info from Chet or other people talking about what to expect in VR because if you're planning something that may come out in a year and a year and a half I mean how much of that is about creating with an idea of future hardware or perhaps with a backpack system or so, something like we don't yeah we, we don't we don't know anything about that stuff but I think that that's the cool thing about the landscape uh, is that 
you know, I'm, I, I would love, and I, you know, Tanya may disagree with me here, but I actually love the idea of the possibility of being, you know, eight months into development and then finding out, oh shit, there's a new cool feature we could take advantage of. Holy oh, no, that's, shit. That's actually really good. I mean, that's yeah. game development, right? Yeah. Like, hopefully yeah. if you're, if you're open to iteration and you have a great idea. So you, much so, yeah. Yeah. You capitalize on that and you, you build on it, you know? Yeah. I remember accounting being talked about. It's a big VR game about accounting. <laughs> I mean, was that at the time? Did you already say I'm totally going to do that? Were you fucking with people? What oh, we was... were just fucking. I mean, we still kind of like that. I mean, all the all the all the documentation, the page on Steam where you go and, and get it. It's complimentary. I said that right already. Yeah. Um, uh, it's gonna it's gonna just be this kind of mislead of like you know this is accounting in VR. You know, it's like it, we're not going to tell people what it is. I think that's yeah, it's, it's important. Like. Like that, people go in not knowing what to expect, so we can surprise them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that to me, and, and that's that's one of the one of the benefits of, of having the game be complimentary is that, you know, if it, like William was saying earlier, like if, if we are selling this, it, now we have to kind of show a little too much, you know, because I feel like we're, you know, it's like, well, why am I going to pay three dollars for, uh, you know, it, 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 it's so much better if it's like, okay, this is accounting in VR. Um, it's free. I'll, I'll whatever. I'll try. The people behind it are interesting. Like they've made games I like, or, or or maybe they're a Rick and Morty fan or whatever. And uh, and then yeah, and then just that weird Alice in Wonderland <laughs> going down the rabbit hole insanity. It seems like you have a lot on my going plate. on on your yeah. plate, and so the idea of in a full fledged VR game studio that sounds like a lot. So is it is it. How do you find that time management? Are you just crazy? I feel like maybe you get asked like this basic question a lot. I do. I, I, there's two answers. One is always partner with amazing people uh, on any venture. That, that you're, so it's like, uh, you know, if I'm going to go pitch a show right now, another TV show, I would not do it unless I partnered with a writer, a writer who I love, trust, and know they're fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the video game side of things, Tanya, partnering with Tanya is like fucking amazing. Uh, I could not do something like this without her and staffing up a team and like she knows all the shit I don't know um, and the passion I have for the stuff I do is, is sort of what you know I mean when you're really passionate and excited and just like it's all you can think about it's not work it's just like it's it's like it's like some people will spend their Saturday I, this is me years ago building a Lego set you know listening to podcasts I used to listen to the Joystick podcast and build Lego sets back with like Justin McElroy and Ludwig. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and uh, that was my favorite thing. Every weekend I would just build a huge Lego set. So now, and that was like the most fun I would ever have. Now my fun is literally like, you know, just, just like I'll have some dumb show on in the background and I'm just, I'm designing and I'm writing and I'm like <clears throat> just actively thinking about um, larger narrative, uh, core gameplay mechanics. What's the core gameplay loop? What's the larger gameplay loop? All that stuff for multiple uh, multiple different um, potential projects. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. He's got his pants on. Okay. Thank you. My dignity.